I did a taste test last night with my two boys and my husband. They hands down prefer this one. Let's talk maintenance. The Solo is, in my opinion, one of the easiest units to clean, hands down. This is mainly because of the way the filling chamber is designed. Yeah, and, and look, this is one of the big challenges, and this is why it took me seven months before I decided to actually set up Batir as a formal organisation, as a formal kind of registered charity. And the reason being is that you have to identify what benefit you're actually going to add to the collective. So could this have been a program that one of these bigger organisations could have run with? Yes, for sure. Hands down, no doubt about it. Alrighty, guys, what's going on? Welcome to this episode of Aussie English. I'm your host, Pete, and this is another episode on the Aussie English podcast as well as the YouTube channel. It is another video episode of the expression episodes that I do. So, these episodes are all about... Me talking naturally about, you know, Australia, what I've been up to, everything like that, but breaking down an idiom in Australian English, an expression that's used in Australian English. Usually, they're used in other dialects of English as well. And then, you know, defining words, giving you examples, situations where I would use it to help you understand how to use it, but also expose you to new vocab and other expressions, and then have a pronunciation exercise at the end, and often talk about Australia at the end. So, that is what we're going to be doing today. Um, A few announcements. Well, it is almost December, and I am looking forward to Christmas. I think it's going to be a lot of fun this year because, you know, COVID's been sort of put under control in Victoria, and we're going to be able to finally catch up with groups of people and have parties and, and, you know, gatherings and get-togethers everything like that over the Christmas period. So, you know, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's one of those things in in Australia, Christmas, although it was originally obviously a, uh, I believe, a, a Christian celebration, although it's probably arguably from paganism in Europe, right? Even before that, you know, the, the summer sol- solstice for us, the winter solstice for people in the Northern Hemisphere. But even though it tends to be, a, you know, seen as a Christian holiday, it's kind of celebrated by everyone from all walks of life in Australia. You know, whether you're Muslim, you're atheist, you're Jewish, whatever it is, people tend to just sort of celebrate and have a great time, get together. It's an excuse to give each other gifts, um, have barbecues, go to the beach and just, you know, enjoy ourselves. Really be thankful for, you know, who we are, where we are that we had a good year or not, as it may be this year, although I think we'll be thankful that it's over (laughs) and almost 2021. But yeah, the the Christmas period I'm definitely looking forward to, and it's especially now that I have children, right? Noah is pushing 18 months. He's almost 18 months old. And last year, he was obviously a bit young. He was about six months during Christmas, six months old at Christmas time. So, he didn't really do much in terms of getting into the Christmas spirit, opening presents, eating anything, you know, he wasn't really the life of the party. But this year, I have a feeling that he's going to be much more excitable, much more interested in Christmas and Santa and all that sort of stuff. So, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Although, I tend to be horrible when it comes to giving people gifts. I tend to buy them and then I can't wait until the time that I need to give it to them and I just give it to them early. So, I'll have to try and prevent myself from doing that with with Noah this year. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a good Christmas wherever you are in the world, whether you're in Australia or not, whether you're atheist, Christian, Muslim, whatever your faith is. I hope you have a good period of the year where, you know, you get to catch up with your loved ones. I hope they're all safe and sound uh, from COVID as well. So, yeah, wishing you all the best in this time. Anyway, so this is the Aussie English Podcast. If you want to get access to the transcripts for this episode and all the other previous episodes, make sure that you sign up for the premium podcast via aussieenglish.com.au forward slash podcast. If you would like that, as well as a hundred or more courses that are breaking down these kinds of expression episodes with vocab videos, pronunciation videos, um, there are natural English conversations, everything like that inside of the Academy, I would suggest also obviously checking out the Academy on aussieenglish.com.au forward slash Academy. You'll also get uh, three times weekly speaking calls with teacher Ian. Go check that out. And then besides that, check out the pronunciation course, the phrasal verb course, or any of the other courses that I have on the website as well. If you are trying to level up your 
English pronunciation, use of phrasal verbs, and everything else. Go check it out. Um, besides that, before I, besides the spiel, I guess I should mention before we really dive in that I did a sale for the pronunciation course, and I'm so glad so many people joined up and took advantage of that sale. It's so good to have you guys all inside of the course and getting a lot out of it already. I've already started receiving emails telling me that they're really enjoying the content, all of the new 25 different lessons in there. But I, I just want to thank you guys, right? I really appreciate your trust in me and that you, you know, are putting the effort into improving your English. So, thank you so much for signing up for that course and getting into it. And guys, if you are interested, it is still available. Go check it out. But let's just get into this episode, right? Let's get into this episode. So, I've got a joke for you here at the start, okay? Here's the joke. Why did the golfer wear a glove on both hands? Why did the golfer wear a glove on both hands? Are you ready? Because he had a hole in one. <laughs> All right. So, it's obviously a golfing joke. The pun here is on the expression a hole in one. There was this freaky shot recently that I saw on the news where some, um, you know, golf pro, he chipped the ball and it skidded. It like kind of skipped across, I think it was a lake, some water went onto the green and then ended up going into the hole in a single shot. So, it was a hole in one, as in he scored that, you know, hole. He got the ball in the hole in a single shot, a hole in one. Obviously, here the person's talking about their glove and wearing one glove on both hands because the other glove, the one that comes in the pair there, has a hole in it. Because the other glove, he has a glove that has a hole in it, right? Because he had a hole in one. Anyway, so that's the pun. Today's expression is hands down. Hands down. I wonder if you've heard this expression before. This is a good one. You can use this everywhere and anywhere in terms of English. Before we get into what it means and how to use it, let's talk about the different words in this expression, hands down. And I, I guess it's sort of an adjective, right? Hands down. Something is hands down the best. Could also be hands down the worst, I guess, but it's an adjective, kind of like a compound adjective, multiple words describing something. So, a hand. I think you guys are going to know what a hand is. It is the end part of a person's arm beyond the wrist, including the palm, fingers, and the thumb, although the thumb is also one of your five fingers. A hand, right? Down, I'm sure as well you're going to know what down means. <laughs> going downwards it is towards or in a lower place or position, especially to or on the ground or another surface, right? I might put my hands down, 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 down. But when you bring these words together and use them for this expression, hands down, something is hands down, and then we usually say the best, the worst, whatever it is, we describe that thing. It means without much effort, easily, or without question. Okay, so that thing is hands down the best. It is without question the best. It's hands down the worst. It is easily the worst, right? So, it's a really good sort of intensifier when you're describing something as being good or bad or green or tall or, you know, whatever the descriptor is. So, the origin of this, apparently, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, it comes from horse racing. So, the earliest examples of the expression come from the 19th century sporting papers where horses win races hands down, meaning that victory was so secure that the jockey, who was obviously riding the horse, could put his hands down, he could relax and didn't have to, you know, keep encouraging the horse to, to, to gallop to cross the finish line because it was a sure thing, right? It was in the bag. It was easily going to be his win. So, let's go through some examples of how I would use this expression hands down, okay? All right, hands down. So, example number one, imagine that you love Netflix, right? You've been in lockdown because of COVID and you've been churning through all of the different TV shows on Netflix one after another. You've been binge watching them, you know, watching them from start to finish, obviously many episodes in a single sitting at times. And you finally stumble across a show that is just awful. It's just the worst, right? And you just, you can't even be bothered finishing 
watching the rest of the series. You set the bar pretty low when it comes to TV series. You'll kind of watch anything. But in this case, it was so bad. It was hands down the worst TV show you've ever seen. You didn't finish it. So, it was hands down the most horrible show that you have ever seen. Hands down the worst. Easily the worst, without a doubt the worst, etc. Another one. Imagine that you are a bit of a foodie, right? So, that's Aussie slang for someone who likes food. But it's usually they don't just like food, you know, in terms of they like eating at home. They like going to restaurants, to cafes, to trying new kinds of food, to sampling things. So, they're a bit of a foodie. They know a lot about food, right? Bit of a foodie. So, imagine you are from, you know, Victoria, where I'm from. You've been to Geelong, you've been to Melbourne, you've been down the Mornington Peninsula, the Ballerine Peninsula, the Great Ocean Road, and you've gone to different restaurants, you know, with, that have won all sorts of different awards. And you finally find this one little cafe that's tucked away and you're getting into these sort of treats, I guess, you know, things like muffins or slices, that sort of thing. You've been trying those recently. And you find this cafe that has hands down the best vanilla slice ever, right? The best vanilla slice that you've ever tried, which is this kind of, it's uh, got vanilla icing. I think it's got uh, pastry and then custard inside of it. And my dad always nicknames these snot blocks. I think that's the Aussie sort of nickname for these uh, vanilla slices, this kind of dessert treat you can get from cafes and, you know, bakeries and stuff. Snot blocks, because it looks like snot, right? The custard in them. Snot blocks, a block of snot. Anyway, so it's so good. It's scrumptious. It's tasty. It is hands down the tastiest vanilla slice you've ever had. Hands down the most scrumptious, most delicious vanilla slice snot block that you have ever wrapped your laughing gear around, right? That you have ever eaten. Hands down the best. The last one, you know, I could I could use this about a person. So, imagine that when I met my, my to-be wife, Kel, in the past, when that happened, I was getting to know her, we were dating, we were going out, we were having drinks, we were, you know, going to different locations like the zoo, you know, getting to know one another. Pretty quickly, I realized that she was hands down the best chick, the best woman that I had ever met. And I made her mine. It worked, guys. The ploy worked. <laughs> you guys know how this ends. I end up, um, you know, married with two kids, one and a half kids. So, she is hands down the best woman that I could imagine marrying, right? Hands down. There you go, Kel. She'll be transcribing this, so she'll love that bit. <laughs> anyway, guys, so that's the expression, hands down. Hopefully, this has been hands down the best explanation of a, an expression in English that you have ever come across. Unlikely, but ho- here's hoping. Um, but remember that if something is hands down the best, the worst, the greenest, the tallest, the smallest, the smelliest. It is without much effort, easily, without question, and then that thing, the the descriptor you're using, the greenest, the biggest, the smallest, okay? So, as usual, let's go through a little listen and repeat exercise. So, this is your chance now to find a quiet spot. If you're listening to the podcast and you're out in public, you know, you can mouth the words. You don't have to say them out loud if you don't want to, but I'd encourage you to do it anyway. You know, who cares what anyone else thinks or just find somewhere away from other people. I used to do this when I was practicing French. So, I really like these exercises. If you're watching this on YouTube, obviously, you can just stay where you are. Keep watching the video. You'll see the words and the sentences come up on the screen. Repeat them after me. And also, if you're working on your Australian pronunciation, then obviously, pay attention to my pronunciation as best you can, because it is hands down the, well, I wouldn't say most Aussiest pronunciation. That's pretty, you know, subjective, but it is hands down a great example of Australian pronunciation. There you go. I was trying to use the expression in there. Anyway, listen and repeat after me, guys. Hands. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. I think that's five. I usually do five of those and I'm just- I've got the window open and I can hear these birds squeaking. So, I, I don't know whether or not you guys can hear those in the di- in the background. They come in under the vines 
and under the um, trees there and, and stay there at night and make a lot of noise anyway. They're a little bit distracting. Anyway, let's keep going. Keep going. I'm hands down the best. You're hands down the best. She's hands down the best. He's hands down the best. We're hands down the best. They're hands down the best. It's hands down the best. Good work, guys. So, let's break down a little bit of connected speech there and pronunciation. You might notice that in words like hands, do you hear me say a D? Hands, hands, hands. It's actually... Be- and this happens quite a lot in English. If you end up with these consonant clusters, so in the case here of hands, the word hands, you've got NDS. Because you've got three consonants in a row, especially where you've got this N, D, and then S, the D can disappear and you'll just- it's as if you're saying hands with no D in there, H-A-N-S. And the same thing can happen with the letter T, right? So, imagine that I was saying- I'm trying to think of an example- this might have been bad in terms of just pulling it out of my my head, but mountain, that's a good example. There's a few of these. I have to try and think. I might have to come back to that another time. But yeah, that happens. I guess the reason I'm pointing that out is because this happens quite a lot in English and spelling can kind of screw you up at times where you're trying really hard to pronounce all of the different letters that you see in the word spelling. But I want you to pay attention to the pronunciation without looking at the spelling at times and to try and see if you can actually hear the pronunciation of each of these consonants or vowel sounds, whatever you it is that you may see in the spelling later on or, or you know, before the exercise and be like, what are native speakers or advanced speakers of English actually saying when they say these words? Because quite often sounds disappear or they appear, they might, um, you know, enter in the word. Another example where this is sort of happening is the Australian R here. So, with the phrases that we went through, your hands down the best, she's hands down the best. Oh, sorry, not that one. We're hands down the best and their hands down the best, where there is effectively you are, we are, they are. Because there's no vowel sound after the word are, which is contracted onto those pronouns, the R isn't pronounced. So, it's silent. You're just going to hear a long vowel. Your, where, their. But if you had a vowel at the start of the next word, so imagine the word was instead of hands down, it was open. You would hear the R and it would be linking to that vowel sound at the front of the word open. So, you would hear your open, we're open, they're open. So, that's another thing to pay attention to. Anyway, finishing this episode up, instead of doing an Aussie fact, I thought I would ask you guys, you know, if you live in Australia, If you have been to Australia, if you've studied in Australia, if you've, you know, obviously been in the country, where is it that you have been that you think is hands down the best tourist location that you've ever been in Australia? You know, maybe it is the Great Barrier Reef on um, the border of Queensland, right, on the, the coast of Queensland. Maybe it is Broome in northwest Western Australia. Perhaps it's the Great Ocean Road in Victoria. Where is it that you think was hands down the best? What was the the best place you've ever been, the best thing you've ever seen? What was hands down the most awesome thing you've experienced in Australia? And for those of you who haven't been to Australia or perhaps who know of places that they would like to go and think these places would be even better than what you've already seen, I would love to know which you think are hands down the best places that you would love to go to in the future. An example for me is Uluru. I've never been to Uluru, which is Ayers Rock, Uluru. The indigenous name is Uluru. The um, the British name that was given to it after colonization is Ayers Rock, named after Mr. Ayer, I believe. 
I've never been there and I think it would be an absolute stunning place to go to be able to get some indigenous tour guides to take you around the place to show you things. Um, it's somewhere that's on my bucket list. It's definitely somewhere that I think would be hands down incredible to, to go to, to experience. So, yeah, anyway, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. However you get back in touch with me, whether you comment on this where you see it on YouTube, whether you send me a message or an email, let me know. I would love to hear from you. So, anyway, guys, that is it. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm Pete, your host. I hope you had a good time and I will see you in the next episode. And oh, stay tuned. There's a lot of things coming for 2021. Next year is going to be a big year. Okay. So, keep your eye out for that. Anyway, thanks again, guys. And I'll see you soon.